Hey, what's going on guys? Let's get right into it. Today I want to talk to you about why the devil does not want you to pray. Why the devil does not want you to get closer to God and to have a relationship with God. Now it may not be what you think it is. So I want to share with you a different perspective, a different angle on this thing called prayer and this thing called a relationship with God. First off, we know that the Bible tells us that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So the devil does not want us to live, to do well, to be successful in any form or fashion. That's the very first thing that we must understand, that his entire goal is to, is to destroy our lives and to make sure that we are not living the kind of life that God intended for us to live. That's his MO, that's his intention. And so, with that in mind, I want to ask you a question. If I, a total stranger, was to tell you that you are great, that you are worthy, that you are valuable, that you are important, and that you were created to do great things, that would make you feel pretty good. I'm sure that would encourage you. That would possibly even inspire you but let me ask you this question how much more inspired encouraged how much greater of an impact and a greater how much greater of an influence would it be if I was your father and I said those same words that you are great that you are worthy that you are important and that you were created to do something great if I was your blood relative your father and I said those same things it would probably hit different right those of us who grew up with a father and they said those things it led to a greater self-esteem a greater you know realization of who we are it set us up for greater success but for those of us who didn't grow up with a father or grow up with parents that told us those things we longed for those things. We wanted those things. Maybe we were not able to articulate it or tell anybody about it, but in our heart of hearts, we wanted to hear those words from someone who knew us, from someone close to us. Well, the Bible tells us in John 10 that Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and life to the full, to the abundant having a satisfying life well jesus the son of god right god in the form of man if jesus represents god and god desires for us to live this amazing life and this satisfying life and this full life then what better way to prevent us from living the life that God wants for us than to distract us and to deter us from the very thing that leads to that kind of life. This is why Satan doesn't want us to pray. This is why Satan doesn't want us to develop a great relationship with God. For some of us, he's discouraged us from even thinking about, you know, having a, a, a faith in God. He's, he's, he's told us lies about Christianity and about faith. He's caused other people to mess up and for the internet to blow it up and to make us feel like, you know, Christians are, um, you know, hypocrites and, you know, they can't be trusted, right? Blah, 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 whatever it might be for you. But there's been all of these lies told and all of these, all of these distractions so that we don't get closer to God so that we don't pray so that we don't go to God for nothing so that we don't you know surrender our lives to God and that we don't grow closer to God so again if God wants the best for us and it's through a relationship with him what better way to stop that relationship than to cause us to think that God can't be trusted that God doesn't love us that God's not there for us and again, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the hearing it from a father. Because if you heard that you were loved, if you 
heard how important you are if you if you heard you know that you were created to do something great if you learned about your gifts and your talents from God the Father the Creator the one who knows you best then how much more confident would you be how much more um, set up for success would you be see God hits different God hits different how many books have you read that told you that that you were something great how many motivational speakers have you heard that told you that you were something great how many people in your life have told you that you're something great and it sounded good temporarily and it got you on a high temporarily but then it kind of faded it kind of went away it didn't stick right you, you're kind of on a roller coaster but I can tell you from experience there is nothing like hearing it from God himself there is nothing like hearing God say through his word and through his Holy Spirit speaking directly to your heart that he loves you and that you are important and that you are worthy and that you matter and that you were created for something great there's nothing like that God hits differently God's voice hits differently God's word hits differently because then we would believe then we would have hope and real faith and trust and belief in ourselves to have the kind of life to create the kind of life to experience the kind of life that God really really wants for us I want you guys to know something man if you've never really thought about this the Bible tells us and I forgot the address but as a man thinks as a man thinks so is he in other words and let me kind of break this down for you your thinking leads to your feeling and your feeling leads to your doing and your doing leads to your having right that's the progress think it feel it do it have it and so if we want to live this amazing life this amazing reality right this satisfying life life to the full life to the abundant that will ultimately lead um that will ultimately be the result of things that you possess physical and you know not physical right things that you that you tangibly have and things that are in your heart but you but but it will be the result of something that you possess that you take possession of well taking possession of anything is going to begin begin with your thinking because your feelings control your decisions and your decisions determine your direction or your actions <laughs> and your actions determine the outcomes and the results that you most regularly create in your life and so Satan wants to start with your thinking if he can cut you off before you start thinking kingdom thoughts before you start thinking the will of God for your life before you start thinking the way that God thinks about you then I can literally prevent you as it gets a little louder out here God can I mean Satan can literally prevent you from starting this process and going through the 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 necessary steps to realizing the kind of life that God wants for you I hope this is making sense let me break it down one more time Satan wants to steal, kill, destroy your dreams, your hopes, your vision. He wants to destroy your life. He doesn't want you to have the life that God created you to have. Satan didn't, didn't create you. God created you. God loves you most. God knows you most. And, and God knows how to lead you and get you to the life that he desires for you to have. So with that foundation, the devil wants to destroy your life. God wants to <laughs> deploy right your life a little rhyme right but 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 truly satan wants to destroy your life god wants to to give you life and the way that the the life to the full to the satisfying to the abundant how it all works is that it begins with your thinking so again why does satan not want you to pray because prayer is going to influence your thinking when you have time with God and you're praying and you're getting in God's presence, you're getting in God's word, that's going to influence your thoughts, your thinking. As a man thinks, so is he.
right? It's not, not as a man wants or desires or any of those things or even God's will for you. It's as a man thinks that, that, that creates the condition of your heart and that, can, and that will condition the other three steps. So as a man thinks, so is he. So Satan wants to cut off your thinking, right? And so if you pray, you're going to start thinking like God. You're going to have faith in God. You're going to have belief in God. You're going to start leaning towards God's word. You're going to start understanding God's word a whole lot better. And now he wants to cut off your relationship with God, right? That, 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 that time where you spend in God's presence and thinking about God, meditating on God's word, meditating on God's presence. Um, you know, even, even like right now, just going outside for a walk and just enjoying God's creation. He, he, Satan wants to cut that off, right? He doesn't want you to go outside and just enjoy life, enjoy the simplicity of life, enjoy nature and just, and just bask in God's provision and love for you. He doesn't want any of that. Why? Because that influences your thinking. So if you begin to pray more, get in God's presence more, get in God's word more, right? Subscribe to God's way of, 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 of doing things and living, then that's going to influence your thinking. And then when it influences your thinking, right, it will be as you are, right? You're going to be more aligned, more in tune with, you're going to be, you know, really channeling the energy, channeling the will and the word of God into your life. So then your thinking is going to impact how you feel. You're going to feel more inspired. You're going to feel more energetic. You're going to feel more, you know, you're actually going to feel blessed. You're going to feel the blessing on your life. And so now as you're thinking it, you're feeling it. Now you're going to start deciding. You're going to start doing. You're going to start making decisions that align with the way that you're thinking and the way that you're feeling. And then it is through those aligned actions that you're going to start creating a life, an outcome, a result that's going to align with the abundance of God's will and word for your life, the, the satisfying life, the life to the full that God desires for you. I hope and pray that this has all made sense, right? Trying to, you know, trying to hold the mic or, you know, trying to hold the camera and, and walk through the neighborhood and everything is, you know, you start breathing a little heavy, but I, I hope that the message is clear I hope that the message has gotten out to you, that you are understanding what I'm saying and that it's been a blessing to you, that it has opened up um, just some conversation within yourself, right? Uh, I hope and pray that it has sparked some ideas that you can begin to utilize and work with to cultivate um, just a greater reality and just a greater life for yourself. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, Go ahead and drop those below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts, your opinion. I would love to hear what you think about this. I would love to, um, you know, answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so again, man, let me let me let me end by breaking this down. You know, one more time, Satan, right, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus, Son of God, God in human form, came that we may have life and life to the full. If you get closer to God through prayer and his presence, if you get closer to God, then you're going to start thinking more like God. You're gonna start feeling, right, more like God. You're gonna start doing things more like God and you're gonna start seeing results show up in your life that are more aligned with God's intention for your life, which is the full, satisfying, abundant life that Jesus came to provide for us. Satan's strategy, how can I prevent that? keep you out of prayer, keep you out of God's presence, because he knows that the more prayer and the more presence, the more thinking, which aligns with God's will and God's word for your life. That's really the formula. This is why Satan doesn't want you praying. This is why Satan doesn't want you to build a relationship with God. He's trying to destroy it. He's trying to destroy your life. He's trying to rob you of the joy, the peace, the happiness that is due you as a child of God. So I want you to press in to prayer. I want you to press in to God's presence. I want you to allow your thinking to be influenced by God. I want your feelings. I want you to allow your feelings to begin to align with your thinking and your thoughts.
I want your doing, your decisions, your choosing, right? To begin to align with your feelings. And I am believing with you. I am partnering with you, believing with you for the outcomes, the results, the manifestations, the showing ups of God's glory and mercy and goodness in your life. I hope and pray that this has all made sense. I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. I believe in you guys.